Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and we're getting an update today on First Nordic Metals, traded on the TSXV under the ticker FNM, and on the OTCQB under the ticker FNMCF. And I'm joined today by the President and CEO of First Nordic Metals, Todd Singh, and the Chief Development Officer of First Nordic Metals, Adam Shilgelski. And guys, it's great to get you back on the show. It's been a little while since we've done an update. And you put out a ton of news for us to get through in one little interview here, but we're going to do our best. And I want to kick things off with the big news that just hit the markets recently, that you have brought in Agnico Eagle as a stakeholder. I believe they have a 13.3% shareholder in First Nordic Metals now. Taj, kick us off with the importance of this as the second largest gold company is now partnered with your company. Yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting uh, step forward for us, Shad. And one of the most influential and uh, gold companies in the world who's known for their technical credibility comes in. That's a great stamp of approval. So we're really excited. And yeah, they're our newest and largest shareholder, right? 13.3% here uh, pro forma. It's a, it's a real meaningful stake. And again, I think it's, it's a real kind of endorsement of our asset quality and our business plan. And uh, we're really excited to have them on board, work together with them, we were already joint venture partners with them at the project level on the Barsley project, 5545 uh, Agnico First Nordic. But now them taking equity is a big step forward. And, and again, re really exciting times uh, as we move forward. Well, and Adam, I want to throw it over to you because part of this transaction was also that you now own 100% of the Greenstone Belt in Finland. And this was a project that you know, you kind of had partial stake in it, and now you have 100% ownership. They were happy to get some equity. Tell us how this deal came together and tell us about this project and why the company is excited to have it in the stable. Thanks, Shad. Yeah, it's, first of all, great to have Igniko as a shareholder, uh, especially since they've had, you know, 10 years, 12 years of experience in Sweden recently with the Barsley project. You know, I acquired uh, through Goldline Resources, the OERV project back in 2020, and really never had a chance because of the markets to go focus on that. Uh, the reason we acquired it at the time, it had, a, it had a resource. It was a second Greenstone belt. So again, not just having a controlling Greenstone belt in Sweden, we now have a second Greenstone belt in Finland. What was most exciting about the project is high grade, 300,000 ounces plus. Uh, the deposit's never been tested below 200 meters. So it's completely open in all directions, including depth. The strike length on that on that on those ounces are just over two kilometers. So you're expecting a down dip extension, which we've never tested. So this is a drill ready project. I think what's most exciting is as as you see in Scandinavia, Shad, sometimes you get really good drill holes, you get you get great technical results, but you can't really put it together into a resource. All of the drill holes that we have here from Igniko, everything sticks together beautifully. We've got a very clear path to at least at minimum double, uh, if not triple this resource. So we've got a clear plan on how to grow the ounces. We have an untested target. It's a 100% owned project now. It gives us uh, incredible flexibility to drill during times of the year that maybe we wouldn't be drilling in Sweden. It gives us the ability to maybe you know spin it out or who, who knows. There's, there's various ways that we can monetize this or develop it. And that's really um, now put the control in our hands and give the shareholders benefit of a second Greenstone Belt in Finland. And and a quick point on that, guys, I want to add is obviously Agnico's in Finland, right? They're producing Kittila mine. They have a stake, a, a large stake in Rupert Resources and also Firefox. Like they know this area as well. So we can, again, strengthen our, our partnering relationship with them all, as well as in Sweden, but also in Finland. Another point I wanted to make before I forget is that Agnico has, has you know, we have an investor rights agreement where they actually, they, they actually can go up to 99% of, of FNM. So I just wanted to, to point that out too. That's, I think, a, a really uh, positive thing to see. Well, congratulations, guys, just because having Agnico in there, yeah, they are very Scandinavia focused. And to your point, Taj, they've already been busy over in Finland with Firefox, the stake they have there, but also in Rupert. And they have their own operating kit to the mine, as you mentioned, but they've also been partnered with you in Sweden. So now you got two Greenstone belts, two countries in Scandinavia, Agnico as a partner, a lot going on. And to top it off, you've also raised some money recently, Taj, with some money coming in from the warrants being exercised. The share price has been on a rip higher. That's put a lot of them in the money. And that's brought in extra money to the company in a way that helps fuel the expiration. So maybe to speak to the warrant situation, how that's been a boon as well. Yeah, I think it's... <laughs> You know, been in the junior mining space for a couple of decades, but you don't often see it where 
a company's uh, warrants from a financing are in the money. It's pretty rare. I think it's a rare occurrence. So ours were well in the money. And, and they came in very strong. We offered some incentives too to kind of bring the money in now. And it, it's, if you think about it, it's a no fee financing, right? No, no finer fees to be paid. Money's coming in essentially at market. And, and, it, and it keeps our shareholders happy and they continue to build their position. So we've been able to bring in about $2.7 million through warrants and options. And then we've started a new program where it'll roughly bring in circa one to one and a half million dollars. Uh, and then we actually even have other warrants that are in the money already, well in the money. So we've got this kind of faucet here to, to bring in some money in a really interesting and, and kind of relatively non-dilutive way. So we're, we're really happy about that because it funds us all through 2024 based on the plans we have, and we'll be, we'll be putting an exploration program press release out soon. But it's, it, it puts us in a really good position to, uh, to get the work going and, and, and hit the ground running. Yep, bringing in the money and keeping the wheels turning. Just to that point, you know, we've spent a lot of time in the past talking about the Barcelli part of the deposit in Sweden, but you have this 100-kilometer trend, and I think it's important to step back just to some news that you had on some of the other projects Paul Back and Adam, I'll throw this one over to you because I know you're very familiar with the project. You had some great base of till samples and some early indicators on the orogenic gold system, and it really got the market's attention. A lot of people got animated by that project in addition to Barcelay. So maybe just speak to Paul Back and, and some of the work going on there on the ground. Yeah, really exciting to follow up. Just, you know, high level. I, I made the original discovery in 2021 late 2021 it was 22 and a half meters of two and a half grams per ton near surface we had continued and drilled beneath that we found continuous mineralization beneath it we went to the north and proved out you know another six seven hundred meters to the north so this is a five kilometer structure it's completely untested we've done a total of 1100 meters so we're really just scratching the surface we made the discovery on the third hole so now we went Further south down the, you know, south of the discovery hole, we did more bot drilling. And just to give you perspective, we we had a three gram per ton sample from bot drilling that then yielded a 22 and a half meter discovery hole directly underneath it. Now we've continued that structure and extended that mineralized zone by a kilometer, and we've hit over five grams per ton to the south. So this is getting closer to the to the open pit that was mined out at Svartalid by Dragon Mining. That five gram per ton is our best bot drilling result to date. And now we can basically focus in on completing all the bot drilling on this corridor, get as much technical information as we can, and follow up with the diamond drilling program. So really what this means is we're just scratching the surface at Pawback and uh, bringing Ignico in just to circle back to that a little bit, you know, why that's so important. We've been on the ground in Scandinavia for four or five years. You now add Ignico as a shareholder for 13%. And, you know, what Ignico wants is technical success. They want to see us putting money in the ground. They want to see us advancing the projects. They are a technically focused organization that is making business decisions based on geology. So part of our agreement with them is to collaborate on the technical side. We're talking to them weekly. We're integrating them into sort of our decision making. We've got a brilliant team ourselves, but to be able to then use 10 years of institutional knowledge from Ignico is fantastic. And and what you're doing is you're creating a, an alignment with the major that they already have tremendous success and knowledge on. Uh, we're leveraging their team. And this is going to give us, you know, a much higher probability of of utilizing our capital wisely and making sure that we're we're doing the right things that we think we should be doing and making sure that we're satisfying what Agnico would potentially want to do in those areas as well. So it's a, it's a true partnership building. Their investment is now, as I would say, they were at the project level. Now they're at the equity level across all of our projects. We already have Mark Legault, a former Ignico uh, exploration geologist with decades of experience with Ignico. So yeah, it's it's an exciting drill target. It's um, it's our best target to date, and it's really setting up an exciting September, October, November this year. Well, and I would say besides the equity stake they have, they also have the brain trust, the uh, think tank, you know, the ability to share ideas, like you're saying, on a technical level and and work this together as a team. So I think that's a huge benefit. And I don't think they're the only one interested, Adam. I think a lot of investors are also interested in getting some diamond drills on there to follow up with some of those targets. So very exciting news out of the Paul Backen five kilometer trend. Bataj, let me throw it over to you for another five kilometer trend along this gold line belt. 
and that's the Storage Union project. Uh, you had some news out there in June that we never got to, and I'd love you just to give us a quick update on what's going on on this other five kilometer trend. Yeah, um, further excitement also from this project, the Store Yukton project, which is probably a season or two behind Powbacken, but following very nicely in its footsteps about 20 kilometers north of Barsley. So Store Yukton's north of Barsley, Powbacken south. And at Store Yukton, we uh, carried out an extensive geochemistry program uh, across the ground. And we found, like you said, uh, over five kilometer geochemical uh, anomaly, gold geochemical anomaly in Till. And it's unbelievable, Shad. You should see the, the geochemical signatures line up so well with what we're seeing at Powerback and, and even what the, in the early days they saw at Barsley. Grades line up well. So really, Story Yukton needs some geophysics on it and then some bot drilling, some base of till drilling. And we think it's an extremely exciting target. Uh, you know, like I said, five, five and a half kilometer corridor. Kind of put in context, Barsley, you know, with two and a half million ounces already under it and hopefully it grows, is sitting on a three and a half kilometer kind of strike length. So the size potential, uh, what you're seeing in Story Yukton is fantastic. And then even at Powerback, and you've got that that kind of same scale as well. And, and multiple corridors at Powerback, and by the way. So yeah, it, it's all really shaping up to, for the, the picture and the vision is this belt that's got three, four multi-million ounce gold deposits on it. And uh, <laughs> uh, who wouldn't want that, right? Absolutely. And like we've said several times, I think if this was in Canada, you'd have six or seven companies on here slicing this up. But the fact that this is all under your control, not to mention the other Greenstone Belt in Finland that we let off the call with, you just got a lot of work to do, guys. I, I do want to ask Adam real quick, on Barcelé, what kind of work do you have slated for the rest of this year or moving into next year just for people to have an update on the Barcelé deposit? Yeah, Ignico's on the ground right now. They're completing a 2,000-meter drill program. They're testing new targets. So we should hear soon about what those results are and uh, we'll share that with the market but Ignico is advancing the work there that costs us nothing we have a free carry and again i think it's just such a unique situation where you know if you're Ignico you own 55 percent of barsley you've done 150,000 meters of drilling you're probably at a close to a pfs level you know there's more ounces there now you've got this exploration partner that's got all the ground around you so now you've got a stake in in sort of the future success of the belt this suddenly becomes a very compelling situation i think for ignico to look at and say you know this is a pretty good a free option for for this energetic team to go find more ounces and uh, and prove it up for us so i think the whole situation with you know barsley and goldline merging is create you know change the dynamics of what they may want to do longer term on top of that you're seeing the price of gold touching all-time highs you're seeing the gdx starting to break out a little bit so you know just you know as a note to investors out there i think we're still in the you know the really early days of uh, of what should be a very exciting few years in the market um you've got a company today now with first nordic that is 80 90 million market cap that really in in a stronger market could be you know orders of magnitude higher and i think it's going to be very easy to deal with a company that's now like Ignico, what are they, 50, 55 billion market cap, you know, in the next two years, I think it's pretty safe to say they're going to go up another 50 to 100%. So, you know, we're dealing with what will be probably within a few years, a $100 billion company that could very easily gobble up this entire belt and turn this first Nordic into a tremendous success. So, you know, we're at the starting gate of, I think, an exciting exploration cycle here. We're going to make sure that we keep bringing in capital at the highest possible price. Our shareholders are incredibly supportive, and uh, and we think this is this company is worth a lot more than what it's trading at today. And we're going to continue to work for that by doing wonderful calls like this with you. Well, that's a fantastic summary, Adam. And I think that you nailed it where before they have the 55% stake in Barcelli, but now they can see that they have the option for all the work your team is doing on Paul Backen, Star Yukton, and, and the rest of the Gold Line Belt, as well as the properties in Finland. Paj, why don't you bring us home with just any final news that you want investors looking out for that's coming down the pipeline? Any other takeaways? Anything else you want investors to think about when they think about First Nordic Metals? Yeah, I mean, Adam covered it really well, Shad, but in terms of, of news, we'll be announcing an exploration program shortly. Uh, we'll be, you know, our warrant incentive program for the second batch of warrants will be will be closing off next week. So we'll be able to announce even more money coming in, as I noted. And who knows if we if we do an additional one. But another major thing uh, undertaking we're looking at is is uh, being listed on the Stockholm uh, exchange. We've seen some extremely favorable valuations 
that gold companies are getting there, you know, much higher in terms of multiples than you're seeing across other exchanges. We think listing there is a natural fit because we're already in Sweden and we think we'll just be able to attract a whole new in, uh, investor base there. We're already attracting a lot of uh, investor interest throughout Europe. So I think a, a Stockholm listing is going to be a huge, a huge positive here for the stock. So um, we're, we're in the middle of it and the process of it, and we'll be able to announce something soon on that. All right. So a couple more catalysts coming up for people to watch out for. And if people listening into the call want to follow along with the news out of First Nordic Metals, definitely click on the link below this interview. It takes you right over to the company website, directly to the news section. And gentlemen, Taj, Adam, keep me posted as more news comes out. We'll try to get you on a little more frequently so uh, we can cover them one by one as they come out. But uh, looking forward to our next conversation, gentlemen. Thanks so much, Ed. Thanks, Ed.